Hi folks, welcome back to our video tutorials. Working with the slider components is what we'll be covering. If you have a basic or a standard package, the default slider that comes with your package will be the Amazing Slider. If you have a Pro package, it will be included with the package. It'll be called the Amazing Slider. It could be called the default. Um, it'll be in the same folder under Default Slider. Some of the things that we've been covering in this tutorial, we're going to replace the images. We're going to show you how to add and remove images, change the thumbnails, change the captions, resize the images mm -hmm, and change the transition type or animation. Here is an example of the uh, default slider and this is the one I'm going to be changing. Now some templates will look better with resized images, some will not. Uh, in this example it's going to work out fairly well because of the type of background that the image is sitting on top of um, and depends completely depends on the makeup of the site. So you may be able to change the size of the images and have it look good. You may be best to keep with the default image size. So it really depends on the aesthetics um, and the template makeup. But I'm going to suggest you stick with keeping the images the same size to start with and then using a different size if the template allows for it. So let me show you the before and after. Here's our before and here's our after. As you can see I, ha I have actually used a larger size image in this particular example before and after because I did want to demonstrate that it can be done and it really depends on the makeup of the product. So let's just jump into it. Let's start off with replacing an image. I'm going to jump into my web editor. I'm going to open up a folder and in this folder I have created some replacement images. Now if I am just replacing the, de the, the default images that are in the product, I don't really care about adding more images or, or reducing the number. I'm just going to um, I tell you what, the best thing to do is name your images so that they're, same, they're the very same name as the default images. So if I were to go into my library, sliders, default slider folder, and then into the images folder, you see how I have a portfolio, a very large one, two, three, and four? Yeah, stick with that naming sequence just like I've done right here with portfolio very large one two three and four all you need to do to replace the images is to grab your replacements drag and drop them into the folder now we talked about image sizing how do you know what image size to use well hopefully we've all upgraded to expression web 4 uh, by this point in time because it's free to determine the size of an image just simply select it and it'll tell you right here the default size is 900 by 280 so to start off with maybe go with the default size in this particular template I happen to know that I have a little extra room to play with. The only way you're going to know is by actually changing the size of the image and seeing what's, seeing how it looks in the page. All right. But long story short, I've got four replacement images. I've named them this very same thing as the default. The easiest way to replace your pics is to create four new images of the same size, name them exactly the same as the original images, all lowercase. There's no spaces between the names. I use hyperlinks and the best way to, to cheat is just to sort of double click and do a copy right go to your actual image that you're going to be using for the replacement and select the entire image name and paste and that will guarantee you have the same image name once you've done that just drag them drop them right into the images folder you're going to do the concert for that confirm save yes to all and you're done and that's all you have to do to replace the default images and there we go I just hit a refresh and now the, uh, as you can see, it automatically sized it for me. Okay, but the problem is the background didn't quite fit. And this is a good example of, it may, in some cases it may work, in some cases it may not work. You'll have to try it out for yourself to see. Um, we can, however, slightly adjust the background size for this particular template and I'll show you where to do that right now. Let's go back to our editor here. And if we use a different size picture, we need to change it in the default slider. So we open up the CSS folder, open up the default slider. We change the maximum width to the actual maximum width of the picture we're using as a replacement. In this case, it's 990 pixels. So we change max width to 990. Save and close. Then we need to go into the JS folder, into the initiate slider one JS file right here. And we need to change the width to 990 and then the height to the height of the actual picture, which is 390. Just like so. 
save. We're going to go back. We're going to refresh our page, and that should give us a little bit. You see how the background uh, opened up a little bit there? Right. There you go. So like I said, hopefully your product will give you that ability. And it really depends on how much we've worked up around it and how we've laid out the design of your particular template. It may or may not work for you. You may be stuck with the original image size. Okay, so that's how to replace the four original images by using images of the same name and then just changing the size. So the size you can change, that's going to be the same for whether you use the same image name or not. Okay, let's talk about a different way of replacing images. And that would be, let's create some new images, and I've actually created a total of 10. I've named them Golf 1 through Golf 10. As you can see, the, my, naming sequence, my naming sequence is very basic, just one word plus a number. My advice to you is don't overcomplicate it, keep it as simple as possible. No, don't use any spaces, don't use uppercase, don't use punctuation, all the basics of naming files for the, the web. What we'll do is we're going to import all these images into our images folder. So I'm going to grab all these pictures, drag and drop them into my images folder. Now I have golf 1 through 10 in here. Now I'm going to actually open up my default slider page. And I'm going to use the picture properties tool to replace the pictures in the page here. Okay. So here's how to replace uh, images in the page if you're using a different file name. Double click on the picture that you see, click the browse button, go to your library, sliders, default slider, images folder. Select the image you want to use as the replacement, in this case Golf 1, click open and OK. Now because I'd already replaced them with a portfolio large, it's probably not the best example, so I'll just use a different example here. I'll use Golf uh, <coughs> 5. Open and OK. See the picture change? Cool. That's all you have to do. One other step. Double click on it again. Click the appearance tab. Deselect specify size and click OK. Remember when you're using, uh, when you want to have a responsive layout, you cannot assign a height or a width to the image size. All right, and then you continue on down. Now, you'll probably want to add and remove some pictures. Let's just talk about how to do that. I'm just going to go into the code view here. And what I'm going to suggest you do, if you, if you know you're going to have more than the default four pictures, set that up ahead of time. The reason being is I'm just going to do a control Z or control Z to get my way out of here. You see how everything is lined up neat and tidy in the code view? Well, to add an image, you do have to go in code view. You don't need to know HTML. You just need to know how to copy and paste. All right. So let's say we want to add, I remember I said we wanted a total of, I put a total of 10 pictures in there. So I'm going to just copy one of the lines by clicking on the number beside it here to the left. I'm going to copy control C in my keyboard and then paste it six more times. And I'm just going to put my cursor down below and paste it one, two, three, four, five, six for a total of 10. Okay. Then I would go back to my design view. I would see that I have a whole bunch of copies of the same picture and then I would just start at the top click browse golf one okay and okay click appearance size bang double click browse golf two that's why I've numbered them like this because it makes it easy for me to remember and you can see that I'm going fairly quickly right but it's fairly easy to change up to 10 pictures in a row right and if you're wondering why I don't just click the Appearance tab and deselect the size, is it doesn't work. You actually have to go back in because the size isn't applied until after you've clicked the OK button. So, all right, click Browse, go for OK, click Appearance, yeah. right. And now we can see we start getting into the duplicate of the image that I've made, so it makes it a little bit easier to figure things out. That's the four. So this is going to be the five. And okay. Anyways, so that's how you go through and you, you change the pictures, all right, and you add more images. Keep in, keeping in mind, you also have to do the same for the thumbnails down below. So you would copy number four here, paste it down below, and paste, 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 paste. And then you'd have to go down through the page and actually find where the thumbnails start, all right? As you can see, they're all duplicate here, and they're not, there's a separating space, and it's not very big. See this extra white? You know, see, it's hard to hard to show. See, there's a little bit of white space here separating the images, but there's a thicker bit of white space here. So this separates the 
the main images from the thumbnails. And what we've done in, in the way we've coded this is, is when you're looking at the little button and you hover over it actually shows you uh, the, the large image or sorry it shows you a, a thumbnail of the image which is really cool but to make life a lot easier for you instead of creating a separate smaller thumbnail which you can right we've just said load in the large one but resize it so it displays as a thumbnail we've done a little bit of CSS and a little bit of JavaScript there to uh, to code it there for you okay um, and you'll have to go through and just make sure that whatever you've selected for your image up here is also selected for your thumbnail image down below. And trust me, once you start viewing the site and you realize that the big picture, you know, doesn't match up with the little picture, you go, hey, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, I better go change that. All right. Now, the other thing is changing the caption. The caption is the alt title right here image one title and the description is the image one description it's pretty straightforward to figure that stuff out once you actually look at the page you hover over you see the title slide out image three title image three description pretty straightforward to figure out after that point in time uh, which bit of text to change and my only hint on this one is uh, for my own personal preference once I've changed the images I like to go back and I just put my cursor at the beginning of the image tag here that little bracket I hit the backspace twice just to line things back up while in the code view just making sure not to knock that bracket off and I would know because I can sort of see with my eye also there's no yellow highlight telling me that there's an error so this makes it a little bit easier to go through and change the image tags here and the description tags for my pictures for the thumbnails you don't need to you just have to make sure that it loads in the correct thumbnail down below here okay now the only trick with changing the captions is you're changing the text that is between the double quotes. You are not changing, do not knock off one of the quotes and do a new title. What will happen if you do that is it changes sort of the color of some of the code over here. right? And like I mentioned before, you don't need to know HTML to do this sort of thing. You just need to know how to copy and paste. And in this case, you just need to know how to type and what, what to type in between. So you would type new title goes here if you even spell it right, and in between the double quotes and my new description. Also, my advice is don't use punctuation in here. Don't use exclamation points and apostrophes and all that kind of stuff if you can help it. It's best just to keep it clean and simple. All right. If uh, something breaks, then take the punctuation out to see if that's what the cause was. And the final thing we can take a look at is the actual transition type. As we go from one image to a next, to a next to the next, right, we'll click see how there's a different transition type here All right a different one there a different one there we've actually created them to be somewhat random if you want a specific transition type you can uh, go to the um, no we're not going to save that let's just get back to my folder list you can go into the JS file into the init JS right here or the init slider and scroll all the way down to the bottom here we've put in some of the best effects you can take out the ones you don't want so if you don't want the uh, uh, blocks double click it hit the backspace once and twice to get rid of the the, the um, transition type and the extra comma okay so you can basically put in here and if you actually did a google search on jquery transition effects there are probably about 13 or 14 they don't all work that well though that's why we've only put these ones in here you can try different ones out um, but we've sort of put the ones in that are going to work best to fit within sort of a, a rectangular sort of a shape like that. Um, but feel free to, to experiment if you want.